Hey my friends, welcome back to Attract Passion. Today we'll be talking about soul eaters. Be aware of soul eaters. They may be all around you. So this is an important topic to talk about, especially when you decide to make something out of your life, but you're still at the beginning of your, your journey, which means you're still surrounded with people with whom you've been surrounded before you ever thought about that you want to grow or you want to make something out of your life. So obviously people that are surrounding you are not the ones that are kind of cheering you up, that are kind of inspiring you and pushing you to become the greatest possible version you can be. So if we Google the word soul eaters, we may come across this statement. Belief in soul eaters is related to traditional folk beliefs in witchcrafts, zombies, and related phenomena. The soul eater is supposedly able to consume an individual's spirit, causing a wasting disease that can be fatal. Obviously, it's coming from ancient stories, and when it comes to a more realistic approach, soul eater is someone who kind of consume your spirit. And it starts happening through words. It starts happening through the way they're tearing you down, the way they're constantly pushing their criticism onto you, their negative ideas onto you, their kind of disbeliefs onto you. And we all may find this kind of people around us. So we don't need to go into such extremes like um, what's happening energetically, like we know about the energy vampires and so on, and most of these kind of people may be energy vampires. But it's important to be aware that when you're surrounded with this kind of people, it will be much, much, much harder for you to keep up the enthusiasm going, to keep up your dream and your goals going because your environment is not, just not the most ideal to make it happen. Which means it, it doesn't mean you can't succeed in that kind of an environment, but you need to become aware that maybe people that are surrounding you are just not the best ones for you to experience a life you truly want to experience. So many times when I'm talking with people and uh, when they describe like, I really want to make something out of this idea. I've designed a plan, I've started working on it, I've started learning, started reading books, started going maybe to workshops and I really started building something here. But people around me are constantly punishing me, constantly tearing me down, never never believing into what I'm truly working on. So many of this kind of people, they've started surrounding themselves with books that can lift them up and maybe with podcasts, with, with videos, with any support they can find, which is a blessing of technology, right? We can surround ourselves with mentors that are not actually physically present in our lives, which is a great thing. You can actually build up a supportive mechanism for yourself, a system of support for yourself that can work at the beginning of your journey. But eventually you will need to recognize that if you truly want to experience the life you're intending to experience, you will need to maybe move away for a certain limiting amount of time from these people to recognize who you truly become when you get away from this kind of energy vampires and soul eaters. So people who are constantly kind of draining you out are people who will never see you for who you are. They have lost themselves on their journeys. At some point they had a dream like you are having it right now. And they see that spirit that you have they see, they recognize it, but they think it's too late for them. So don't feel sorry for them, wish them well. <laughs> That's the best thing you can do, because maybe, just maybe you will inspire them. So when people are constantly tearing you down, what can you do when people are constantly tearing you down? Someone constantly criticizing your goals and dreams without offering constructive feedback or anything that 
could be used as an insight that can help you to improve your work. Like, constructive criticism is very important, especially at the beginning of our journeys. Like, when I've started painting, many times Maya's father, my partner's father, came to me and started laughing at my paintings, which was kind it kind of hurted me back at that time. Like, why are you constantly laughing at my work? I'm, I'm learning. But, you know, that was his uh, expression of um, saying, I know you can do much better, right? And eventually we recognized that. So it was constructive for me, but he was also very supportive, so I can't blame him. But the laughter was painful, but constructive, like he believed I can do much better than that, so it gave me a sense of support. So when people are constantly tearing you down, you will really need to build a muscle of a belief. You believe in yourself. You need to see that there's a reason you have this kind of people around you, because maybe your muscle of believing into yourself is weak, and then the universe put you into the position where you will strengthen it. So you may have people who are constantly tearing you down only so you become a bit of a stoic in this department, right? You become a bit emotionally stronger and more resilient to what they say. But sometimes it may turn into a rage, into a motivation that you will prove them wrong, which may often lead into feeling not good enough and then you will seek for the incredible results only to prove them that you can actually accomplish something, which can also be a great motivation, but eventually you will learn that um, you are never good enough. You're never good enough until you learn to love yourself. And self-love is the only antidote to any pain you will ever experience because of not feeling good enough. And if you don't love and care for yourself and your own needs, you will cause a great um, and very unnecessary suffering for yourself and for others. So learning to love yourself despite the criticism around you will help you so much to keep going, even though you may not be in the most ideal environment. Like most of us haven't started in ideal environments. If you will study any story of I don't know, people who you admire, you will notice most of those people haven't started in ideal environments. And the stories can be very helpful when we are at the beginning of our journey. So if you have this kind of soul eaters around you that are constantly tearing you down, you need to build a supportive system for you. Maybe even boundaries don't work with this kind of people. Like I know when I was younger, my mother was always like that. So. For her, nothing would work. Like, if I would say, the only thing that truly worked was for me to move away. When I moved away, we actually started building a healthy relationship. Because sometimes, when we separate, we start to see what truly matters, right? When we're constantly together, we're, like, constantly triggering each other. And we're triggered because we have emotional wounds, and emotional wounds, like, are like any other wound, like if you cut yourself, if you will constantly be dragging that cut, if you will constantly be kind of touching and robbing that cut, it will just not heal, right? That's same with emotional wounds, if you're constantly surrounded with people who are emotionally triggering you, it will be much harder to actually heal this emotional wound, so the greatest thing you can do is to move away for a certain limiting time, so you can reflect on that and maybe you don't need to go back ever again. But um, the most important thing is that you recognize what truly matters to you and you follow that. Because look at that as you're being tested. You know, life can be quite intense. Yesterday we've been talking a little bit about the year of the dragon that started yesterday. In, in that video we we were talking a, a little bit about these intense things, parts of life. And whatever you're building on, if you're building a business, if you're an artist and you want to make a living out of art, there's 
an entrepreneurship part of it that is always a bit um, heavier than the playfulness that's experienced in art. So people are often avoiding it. It comes to self-worth, it comes to standing behind your price. Doesn't matter what kind of product you're offering on the market, eventually you need to learn to communicate, you need to learn to negotiate, you need to learn to stand behind of your price and to stand behind of your price you need to build a self-worth and self-worth can only emerge out of self-understanding, understanding of yourself, knowing why your work is unique and you can only know that your work is unique if it's original, if it comes from you, if it's not a copy of someone else. If it's really original, you know that nobody can replace it and if nobody can replace it, it means that you're in control of its price. And if you're in control of it, its price, then you're deciding what truly is the price of your work. But when you decide what's the price of your work, then you will also notice what's the ideal customer that can actually offer you that price. And those are all the strategic parts of the business that require a lot of um, sometimes even emotional toughness, which, you know, is as much important as emotional vulnerability. It's the duality of life, right? When we're becoming more emotionally aware, we also learn to become more emotionally tough. So then we can navigate through life by knowing what part of us to feed and when to let go of everything and learn to life to guide us. So it's a constant awareness, play of awareness, like what is the most necessary right now? And sometimes what's the most necessary is what's the hardest and we need to take it and make something out of it. And sometimes what's the best we can do is to let go, to quit and to reflect on, to make a new strategy or to, to make a new plan or to, to surrender completely and see what finds us, right? So when people are constantly tearing you down, eating your spirit, eating your enthusiasm and robbing you from your dreams, usually the greatest thing you can do is to make a plan to move away from this kind of people. I know you may say, well, I can't move away, like I can't afford to move away. So I'm not saying you should move away immediately, I'm saying make a plan to move away from this kind of people in maybe the next few years. So if you have a plan to move away, then if you already have a job, if you already have an income, you can start putting some money aside so you can move on your own. And when you will move on your own, you will also learn <laughs> to take care of certain responsibilities. And it's for the younger generations, most probably, but for the older ones, sometimes people are writing us like, I have, I'm in a relationship and I have kids and uh, people around me are not supporting me in this new endeavor. Well, most probably because you still need to provide them a certain sense of security and therefore they don't believe into your new dream because they haven't experienced the results you're looking for. And they haven't experienced the results you're looking for because you haven't experienced them as well. So they have this healthy criticism towards you because you've started doing something new which is completely okay and completely acceptable. So don't look at your partner and your kids as people who disbelieve in you, who, who are tearing you down, Ex except if it's really extreme, but usually it's not, it's just like you're choosing a new endeavor and new endeavor take time, like most probably at least three to four years, so something will grow out of it, something that will be able to support you as much as maybe your previous job, which is again, it requires a sense of patience but also consistency, determination and persistence. So you need to start noticing when people are tearing you down and when people are just giving you this constructive criticism that is actually like a sign of support that people care for you and people actually want you to experience what you're looking for. But they know it's not as easy as you may think because of your naivety. Often when we start, we are a bit naive around, you know, 
what we're working on because we've hurt someone on social media and we then compare ourselves with them and because we've heard just a limited amount of information what that person needed to go through to experience that level of success we think it's much easier than it actually is like sometimes people write to me like they wish they would have a purpose or they would do something like i'm doing because maybe my work on youtube youtube looks like something um easy but there's so many hours of filming of all the, these paintings that it's it's impossible to put into words like how much time it takes to record everything and to, to put everything together so we never see the realistic or the reality behind someone's success so as jordan peterson said compare yourself to who you were yesterday not to who someone else is today because this is this is the only healthy comparison if you want to have let's say a healthy approach towards your growth and towards who you are today so when you're surrounded with this type of soul eaters who are sabotaging you who have this disbelief and maybe are even trying to manipulate you you need to understand that those are not people that should belong into your future they're present right now but you are not existing just in this moment. You're a multidimensional being, which means you're existing in all different times that are coming in the future. So it's not just what you have right now. It's what you do with what you have right now that will take you to where you want to be. So when you're thinking about your not, uh, your reality, don't just think about yourself. Think about the circle that is surrounding you, the system of support, the team of people that you may not know right now, but you want to meet in the future. Think about the people you want to be surrounded by, but look at the people that are surrounding you right now, like they are training you, like they are the weights in the gym, making you stronger, making you more emotionally resilient, making you more emotionally stronger and more aware. And they're also teaching you to read the patterns in life, to recognize, because for example, in business, I've learned some people come to you with good intentions. They show up as kind and nice people, but then eventually they turn out with hidden agendas. So sometimes we need to have people around us already like that so we can easily read this kind of patterns. You can easily read the energy behind of this type of people but if you don't have the background of it you will easily be tricked later in life so think about these soul eaters as kind of spiritual weights that are making you stronger so you can be prepared for the life you're creating and don't think like this is hell think about as a stage of preparation the universe is preparing you and actually the universe is testing you are you really willing to live the life you said that you want to live because if the answer is yes then you need to prove that you're worthy of that kind of a life and to prove that you're worthy of that kind of a life you need to show up as someone who can easily design for yourself a system that will be supportive for you and sometimes maybe you need to lock yourself into a room and surround yourself with helpful books with incredible information that will lift you up and then you need to build a discipline a determination look I am working on this right now I'm not available I'm working on this right now I'm not available and sometimes you just need to disappear for a few months when maybe your old friends will try to manipulate you hey stop doing that and go partying with us they will try different tricks to get you back into your old self and you can say hey i don't i don't have time for this right now i don't have time for this 
because I'm working on something else. You don't even need to explain why. Your dream is your dream. As soon as you start talking about it, you're already exposing your vulnerability to someone who just don't need to know. It's your project right now. So I found out for, for myself that the greatest possible solution when we don't or we can't walk away from this type of people is to build a system of support. It's like, you know, in spiritual traditions, they would say, build up a... Uh, uh, walls of light around you that will kind of protect your energy but in more physical and materialistic terms it's like build up a system of information of knowledge of emotional needs that you have like feed up or and learn to generate the emotions that you are not provided by others support for yourself, prioritize yourself, give care to yourself, self-care, right? Become a bit more active person because it will help you. You know, when you, when you speed up the blood flow through your veins, what happens? You start to feel more energized. And when you feel more energized, what happens? Your frequency rises beyond the frequency of those that we may call today soul eaters. And when it happens, you see them as smaller beings, smaller people. No ego here. But you see them as the ones that are hurting. So therefore, when you see someone who's hurting, you will not allow to be a victim of them. You will rather just do your thing until you will be able to Maybe support yourself to such a degree that you can move away and build up new friendships, new relationships, and new support. And if you're maybe in a family where you have kids and you have a partner, when your dreams will start succeeding, because if you will keep up with it and if it truly is your dream, like you're not trying to be like someone else, you truly experience that calling where you want to do something like that and you're willing to do anything that it takes, then also your family will notice that you're changing for the better and therefore you will become a great inspiration, most probably for your kids, if or when things will start turning out for the better, many people may be inspired by this kind of story. So. I want to encourage you to really prior prioritize yourself, but only because everything you're working on is not... You're not doing it just to make results. Because if you're doing it just because of results, you're most probably doing it because you want to prove someone wrong. You want to show up like, look, I finally did it. Do it because you're building your character. Do it because you're not everything you could be right now. And you know there's something more you can become. You're building yourself up. And when you're building yourself up, it means you need to do more of what you know that is good for you. What you know that will make you a better person and less of what is not good for you which is the most challenging thing because most of the time we know what we should do but we are not doing it with which means who's like who's in control then if you know you should do something but you're not doing it it means something else is controlling you so what is that something else in ancient times they would say spirits are possessing you now we would say well, certain emotions that are most probably unacknowledged and most probably we are not even conscious of them are still present in our system because of certain unconscious thoughts and beliefs. And we don't know how to resolve them. But through consistent practice of constant reflection, introspection, and work on that dream that we have through embracing our qualities and talents and skills 
we eventually enlighten what was hidden in the darkness. And then what was hidden in the darkness can be used as a great insight or even as a story of a hero's journey for someone else through your work. So I think it it can be really powerful. So don't be so, let's say, pushed away because people around you don't believe in you. Look at it as you're meant to be there. Look at it as all people in your life are meant to be there only to make you a person you need to be to experience a life you want to live. So, my friends, I hope you found a great value in today's video. I think it's a very important topic. I hope you found it helpful. And thanks to everyone for supporting my work. I'm an artist, as many of you know. So, you can find many of my artwork in our Etsy store. I draw my passion and our fresh new store, attractpassion.com. So, go and check it out. My friends, till next time one love hey my friends i hope you've enjoyed in today's video i want to remind you that we've just opened a fresh new store called attractpassion.com where you can find all of my work original paintings you can find prints of all of my art in different sizes so go there and check it out attractpassion.com if you will use the code passion15 passion15 you will get 15 off onto your first order. So go there and check it out. And to anyone who would love to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have some free spots once again. You can go and check out the link in the description of this video where you can find everything there. So go and check it out. If you would like to do something with the inspiration that you feel right now, it will help you so much to transform your life. I want you to do something with it. If you feel inspired, you have to do something with it. So my friends, till next time, one love.